Devin Pelton here from Antigua Winds, and I happen to be in the basement of one of our important dealer partners, Alamo Music. Today we're going to talk about, you got your new clarinet, you're ready to go home and tear it up. I know you're excited, I know you want to get this thing open and play and impress your parents and everything, but you know what? Slow down. There's a lot of things that we need to talk about that we want to, we, we, we don't want to mess up our instrument before our first lesson, right? Because I know you can't wait, so I'm going to show you a couple things that we can do to make it so we don't mess up our instrument while we get these, uh, these first, first beautiful sounds, right? Okay, got our logo on the top, right? Now we know this is top, but we're still going to kind of take it nice and easy because we want to see... Yeah, cool. Everything's sitting in its place, right? There's nothing rattling around, nothing gonna fall. Lots of pieces, parts. Man, where to start, where to start? Most manufacturers put the mouthpiece on the left side. Mouthpiece is what we're gonna start with, okay? It, your instrument might be in a bag, it might have papers in it, it might have all kinds of stuff in, in it, but something that's very important that I want you to remember always this case is built to carry this instrument. Yeah, we can fit a pencil and some things here in the front, but never, ever, ever put your book or anything. It might fit, but don't put it on here because all these pieces, the shiny stuff on the clarinet, push into the soft part of the case. If we put something on top like a book, then we're gonna bend those up. We don't wanna do that because when we bend these things, we gotta take it back to the store and get it fixed, get it unbent. So let's not do that. All right, let's make some noise. In here someplace, you're gonna find something that looks like this. This is called a reed, R-E-E-D. The reed is what makes the vibration. We know that all sounds are vibrations, right? We change the vibration either shorter or longer or what we make it vibrate and that's how we change sounds. So the reed is what's gonna provide the vibration. So what I want you to do right now is take that reed out of its container, it's brand new, and it's, it's made out of cane. It's very flexible. I could break this just by pushing on it. Let's not do that because we don't want to have to buy a bunch of these things, okay? Because once they're broke, they're broke, they're trashed. Put that in your mouth. Lollipop, right? Do I look goofy? So do you. I'm getting it wet. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep sucking on that while I tell you the rest of the, the, the next thing to do. Mm. No, I'm not, but keep yours in your mouth, okay? Because we want it nice and wet. The mouthpiece is gonna be on the left side of the case most of the time, but it's always gonna look like this. It's going to be the short thing with the cork on it, all right? The shortest piece that has a cork on it. That's called the mouthpiece. Very first thing I want you to do is take that mouthpiece out and set it on the table. Now, we're gonna look in the case and we're gonna find something that kinda of looks like chapstick. It's not, this is not for your lips. This is for the corks, because those corks are what go together and hold our clarinet together, and this is what makes them a little bit slippery so they can go together and not rip the cork up. If we put our instrument together without putting this cork grease on the corks, we can trash it. We can trash the corks, we can rip them and tear them and things like that. All bad things, let's not do that. So, we got our cork grease, we got our mouthpiece. Open up the cork grease. Yours might look different. It might be a square tube that you put it, get out with your finger. It might be a, a bottle that you squeeze. Mine is kind of a chapstick looking thing and it works the same way. I kind of turn it up a little bit and I have some cork grease exposed. I'm gonna take that cork grease and I'm gonna rub it on my cork, the brown part, okay? Now you see those big globs that I got on it? That's exactly, I, I want a lot because this is brand new. It's never been done before, so I want to put a lot on it. Now I'm going to take and I'm just going to rub that gooey stuff right into that cork. And I'm going to rub it back and forth so it gets nice and slippery. 
Okay, after you've applied the cork grease on the mouthpiece and all the corks, now for time purposes, I'm not gonna make you watch me apply it to all the rest of the corks, but I want you to do the same thing. I want you to put a glob on it and I want you to rub it in, okay? We've got the mouthpiece now, it's ready to go. We've got it greased up. Now, we're gonna take this cap off because this is just for transporting it. It's just for protecting stuff when we're not playing on our mouthpiece, okay? We're gonna take our ligature off of the mouthpiece by loosening these screws and sliding it right off. Now this whole time, you've had your reed in your mouth, right? So your reed is nice and wet. I want you to now take it off and look at the bottom of the mouthpiece. It's a flat part with a hole in it. I'm gonna put that reed in there right on top of it okay now this remember it's fragile so we don't want to break it i'm going to put it on there and then i'm going to look at the very tip the very tip of my mouthpiece and i want to see a little black on the end of the reed okay about like if i took a pencil and drew a line about that much uh, uh, mouthpiece on the end of my reed so i don't want the reed sticking past the mouthpiece and way down here it wants to be just right, about a pencil list. Okay. Now, I'm gonna hold it on there, but I can't really play it like that. That's why we have this thing called a ligature. I'm gonna carefully put that over top of, not. don't catch the end of your reed with that. And some of you, your screws are going to be on the bottom, some of you on the top, but you know what? Everyone is going to have the screws facing their right hand so they can tighten and loosen with their right hand. So. I obviously have mine on wrong because I, it's on the wrong side, okay? You with me? All right, so mine is what's called an inverted ligature. My screws go on the top. So I'm gonna slide it down so it kind of wedges on the mouthpiece and it holds that reed on there. And I'm gonna kind of look real close at that and make sure I still have the reed straight on the mouthpiece and only has about that pencil lead uh, you know, distance from the top of the mouthpiece. And I'm gonna kind of pull it on there, and now I'm gonna tighten it. My screws are on the right. My case, they happen to be on the top. Yours might be on the bottom, but it's gonna be on the right, okay? So that's how you can tell where it is. Now, I've got my reed secured to my mouthpiece. Cool, we're almost ready. Don't do it yet. I know you wanna do it, don't do it yet. I'm gonna show you how to kind of make it a little easier. Set that aside. The smallest piece left in your case is called the barrel, okay? The barrel is what the mouthpiece goes in. We've already greased it so it's ready to go in, all right? So there's obviously two ends of the barrel. One end, it's not a very tight fit. That's the wrong way. The other end, it's gonna be a really tight fit, so I'm gonna kinda of twist it on there, and now I have my mouthpiece on my barrel. Doesn't look like much, but you know what? We can do all kinds of cool stuff with this. In fact, this is what I wanna start with. Take a look and make sure that you didn't mess up your ligature when you twisted that on. You probably did, but that's no problem. We just loosen it up, adjust it, and get it just right. Okay, now we're ready for our first noises. The reed sets on your bottom lip, not on your teeth, and your top teeth touch the top of this mouthpiece, okay? The way we make our face look, it's kind of like, um, remember when you eat spaghetti and you've got that strand hanging down and you want to bring it up, right? Think of how you do that with your face. That's how I want you to make your chin kind of feel. Kind of think of that. That's how I want you to feel. It's not really tight, it's not really loose. It's just kind of flat and think of that spaghetti coming up, okay? Put your mouthpiece in there, and it's not straight out. It's kind of at the same angle as my nose, all right? That's all there is to it. Kind of cool though, I can do stuff like. All kinds of stuff. You know what, if your little brother sleeps in on Saturdays and you wanna wake him up, this is a great noise waker to wake him up. Don't tell your parents I told you to do that, okay? That's, but anyway, that vibration that we get, 
I'd love it if that's all you did now until band started. Because if you did that and got really good at... for a long time, then the band director is going to have an easy job because all he has to do is teach you what fingers to put down, okay? Well, I know you're not going to, so let's see what else we can do. All right, we've got that mouthpiece on the barrel. We know that we can make vibration with it. Let's set it down on the table. Now, the next biggest piece is the next piece that goes on. That's called the upper joint. Most of the time, it's going to be in the front of your case, all right? And remember, we've already taken and put the cork grease on. If you haven't done it yet, then don't put it together until you put the cork grease on here and rub it in. I've already done it, but I've rubbed it in and it's ready to go. I grab around here firmly. I not so hard that I'm bending these things, these keys and the rods and things, but I'm grabbing it nice and firm. You see that I've got cork on both ends, right? If I put this together the wrong way, it doesn't fit. It's really, really loose, okay? That's the wrong end. Just like when we decided which end to put the barrel, the mouthpiece into the barrel. So I hold it nice and firm. I hold this nice and firm, and I twist it together. There we go. If we have our cork grease on there, it goes together really nice. Now, let's look at this. You see this one key that's all by itself? That's the register key on the bottom of the clarinet. We're gonna line that up straight with our reed that's already on here, okay? So the reed straight down to this key. Deal? All right. Now, let's send the vibration through this. Doesn't matter how you hold it, just hold on and see if it's a lower vibration or what it sounds like, what the note sounds like. Hear that? We can get the vibration through the instrument. So now that sounds different. It's sounding more like a clarinet note, okay? All right, set that part down. The next biggest piece, you're right, that's the next one we use. We hold this one up. This is called the lower joint of the clarinet. You notice on that one, you're only gonna have cork on one end. We've already greased it, right? Okay, we've greased the other cork that we're gonna put it together. We can't put those two together. They obviously don't fit. Right? So, we're going to hold it nice and firmly, and on this one, we're going to hold it so our hand's closer to the top than to the cork. All right? Now, on this one, this is an important thing. I want you to grab it right around here, and I want you to make sure that you push down on this key. This has got a ring around it. Okay, it's the second hole from the bottom, and when you reach around there, I want you to make sure you push down on that key, because it's got a thingy called a bridge key that that picks up. When I push it down, it picks that up. That's gonna get it out of the way because that goes, it bridges the gap between the two pieces. That's gonna let it go on top of the bridge key on the bottom, okay? So again, I push down on that, Make sure I pick up that bridge key, then I put this together, and then this part of the bridge key is going to slide under it, okay? So, bam. Just that easy. Piece of cake. Now I look at it, and I see my holes. See the open holes on your instrument? Make sure they're in line all the way to the top. Now remember, I have an inverted ligature. Yours might not have the screws on top. It might have them on the bottom. But just make sure it's everything in line. Everything, all the holes are in a nice straight line. Set that aside. Last piece, right? This is called the bell of your instrument. This is the last thing that we need to put it together and we're gonna have it all the way together. The bell of the clarinet. Grab it, we've greased that, put it together, bam. Clarinet is a clarinet now. It's together. If you want to get real fancy, you can make sure the Antigua logo is pointing up and you can make sure that the Antigua logo here is in line with the Antigua logo here and all that stuff. But that's not going to make any difference at all in the sound. All right. Now we've got this long thing. Let's send the vibration through that and see how it works. Now that sounds like a clarinet note, doesn't it? 
That's what I want you to do. I don't want you to worry about putting fingers down and different fingers and where they go and things like that. Make it last. For as long as you can. Start and stop the note. Make it last as long as you can. It really doesn't matter what comes out the end, all right? As long as you're not too tight, your lip is a nice cushion on the bottom, your teeth on the top, that's gonna work. We'll learn eventually how to plug up the holes and d change the different keys and all the notes and stuff like that. But uh, for now, I'll tell you that your left hand goes on the top of your right hand. Your right thumb has got something right here called a thumb rest. Technical term is thumb rest. Rest that on your thumb. There you go. That's how you hold it. Your left thumb's gonna be on a hole here. Your right thumb's gonna be holding there. And then you're gonna learn. Let's say now you've played for an hour and a half and you're ready to put it away. It's important that we just go reverse from the bottom up just like we went from the top down when we put it together. Grab it nice and firm, pushing down stuff but not bending anything, and twist the bell off, put it where it goes. Make sure the Antigua face is up because that looks good. <laughs> and then we're going to grab here and pull it apart, twisting, pulling it apart. It doesn't really matter if we pick up that key now because it's not going to bind and, and bend when we pull it apart. Remember that that piece went in the back of our case. If it doesn't fit in, like you have it turned the wrong way, don't force it. It will go in. The thumb rest on the bottom is going to go in a hole in the case. It's going to fit perfectly. Around the barrel, grabbing the upper joint, I'm going to put that in. And again, if I put it in the wrong way, it's obvious it's not right, okay? It doesn't fit, it rattles around. I put it in here and fits real well. Now, I'm gonna take the reed off every time you put your instrument away. Take that reed off, because nasties can happen, bad things can happen if we don't take that reed off. We're gonna take it off because we're gonna make it last. We're gonna put it back in its protective case or in the box or whatever it came in so we can make it last for a long time. We're gonna stash it in there. Now I can grab this and not worry about my ligature and things like that, right? So I twist that apart, my mouthpiece off of my barrel. I put my barrel where it was. I put my ligature back on my mouthpiece, even though it's not holding anything, just so I know where it is. I put my cap back on and I put that where that goes. Everything's in there. Uh, your band director will show you how to use a thing called a swab to clean it out and stuff like that, but that's common. You'll learn how to do that. It's, it's, in, it's in the case. You'll learn. I think we did a good job. Whew, that was a long time, right? But we put the instrument together we learned how to open it so you know it wasn't going to rattle around on the floor. We put it together. We learned that the reed is what makes the vibration. We learned kind of that little spaghetti trick. We know that our lip is a nice soft cushion on the bottom, our teeth on the top. And we made some noise. Beautiful sounds. It's a great start. Thank you very much for watching and practice hard. It's fun.